Thank you always. What can we do to make sure we finish this month of Toba Muharram well to prepare for the next month? We have Sayyid al Istighfar on the app. So there's the du'as on the app. That is the master of istighfar, making istighfar, having good deeds, giving sadaqah. We said those are all the teachings from the regulator. That every time we think we've done something wrong, give in the way of Allah, do a good deed in the way of Allah so that to bring the hisab always at a positive and never to leave a night in which the account is at a negative. And as much as possible the du'as, the awrads and the zikr. But whatever we do in life it can't compare with these holy companions. That's why when we talk about these holy souls and Ahlul Bayt and holy companions we call them all lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad Celebrate their lives, go out and get some food. Anybody can go to the market and buy some bread and buy some things to put a sandwich together to go get some water if it's hot weather. And go, Ya Rabbi for the sake of Sayyidina Bilal and Habash salam, I want to go out and give people food and water and take away my difficulty and send for me a freedom that Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq come to relieve me from the burden of this dunya. And if not the burden now at least on my last breath that led me to be with Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq to be freed from the the difficulties of what this dunya will try to do to me in the grave and that to be freed and brought to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad one whom is freed from the azab of dunya inshaAllah. So we do good deeds in their name so that follow the example of your shaykh. So that's, that's always the thing is that when you're watching you know it's not entertainment that we're trying to provide although we make it entertaining. Go to our Facebook, go to our social media accounts and say, look I told you before a few years ago we, we had only a cake. We brought a cake for holy events, we sat at the zawiyah and we had a cake. And then a few years later we started to put out food, put out drink, put out water. And so alhamdulillah blossomed it to all over the world. From India. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan, There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Yeah, to Kashmir, to Kenya he's doing, to uh, Pakistan, to Canada to US and different cities, they're taking these holy nights and putting out thousands of pounds of food. The images that we just put onto the internet of thousands of pounds of food, I saw the ones in Vancouver from Costco which was $15 fillets of salmon fish from Haji Karim's contact at Costco, thousands of dollars of food that these people wanted to throw away and we're giving out in the names of these holy companions and Ahlul Bayt. You, you, you think this is something small? Or Allah is granting us a great reward because these are not things that we can do. Allah wants to give our people immense rewards like gold tokens from paradise that you don't even understand the value of one of them. Go pick up the food from here, give it to there, I'm going to write for your rewards. Not the picking up of the food was in our cleverness and not the distributing of it was in our cleverness but Allah granted for us the reward of it. 
that's a great Lord. This is a generous Creator because He could have said, no, no, I didn't want you to get it and I definitely don't want to rewrite the reward of you giving it. So it's all in Allah's hands. So now you look, look at the pictures, thousands of meals are being given away, thousands of pounds of food are being given away. So then copy your shaykh, get a Fatima Zara t-shirt. If you go with your own shirt into the stores and say, give me your food, nobody's going to give it to you. Why you don't do it the right way? Some people say, oh she went here and there nobody gave us food. Of course they're not going to give you food, you're going looking like you're going to take their sandwiches for free, nobody will do that. Take the Fatima Zara shirt, take a letter from the charity that we want to give food. Now Sheffield in the UK they got food from Starbucks, they got food from other places, they made their own meals and distributed and Allah will open. Allah knows which one of these stores want to throw away their food, He's going to inspire them, go get it from there, go get it from here. So it's a system by watching your shaykh, look how you conduct yourself, look how you do your charity, look how you do your actions, look how you propagate the knowledges and that becomes the immensity of blessings in life. That if you want to have any deeds that are going to make you astonished by me on this holy night, no but I can give water and food and that will bring immense gifts to myself, my family and my community. So everyone participating in it, everyone who's active in it, anyone who's, who has anything to do with supporting it, even paying for the gas of the truck to go out means all the people online whom are supporting that van to go out. They share in the blessings of the gentlemen whom are distributing food and water on these holy nights. And then those gentlemen are taking the blessings for their family and for generations of their family to be dressed in their hisab in paradise. That when you take your last breath and the good actions have manifested and comes a beatific angel into your grave and say, who are you? So, I'm the, the manifestation of all the food and water you were giving out. And I'm here to feed you in the grave, I'm here to give you water in your time of difficulty. What pain do we feel in the qabr? What, what states will we feel in the qabr when the good action comes and says, no, no, I'm the one whom the manifestation of all the food you are giving to people. Means all of this is from an ocean of faith. If people don't have faith, there's nothing you can say to move their hearts. If they have faith, they know, they know that if a day comes where we can't find water and we can't find food, for some reason some sort of catastrophe has happened. You don't think that Allah kept to your hisab that these were the people whom they were doing all these good deeds. Allah will send from angels and jinn to make sure that you find something to eat and to drink inshaAllah. This is the faith of certainty and yaqeen that do good and see good, do bad and see bad and keep your faith in action. So do good things and you should see a blessed life, you do bad things and you should see the evilness of life. We pray that Allah always give us to do the good and to the best of things and to see the good and the best of everything, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Should we take more time to include all the Prophets in our idha and dedication? The 124,000 Prophets you're going to recite? You can do anything you want, do the main of whatever the idah has from the Sultan of awliyas. Anything else you want to add that you have time you can sit and recite 124,000 names, it's up to you, 313 names from the Tawis, that's up to the individual. But uh, read from the idah, whatever is written on the idah and whatever the Shaykhs have given of their awrads and their uh, etiquettes to be recited, alhamdulillah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. 
Could you please elaborate on how creating energy and surrounding energy around us from tafakkur? From what? From um, muraqaba, tafakkur. You have to get the meditation book, Shay. <laughs> That's a whole subject. <laughs> yeah. You have to get the, the timeless reality and start making meditation inshaAllah. You have to get three copies. Start buying copies of the timeless reality and give them out as gifts. Anybody whom has rizq, you give donations. Anybody who has lot of rizq, buy books and give them out as gifts. At least if somebody will read the book that you gave them, you'll get the reward especially if you're buying a book and not reading it. If somebody else reads a book that you give them as a gift, Allah will grant you the reward of that person's knowledge they acquired from the uloom and the knowledges that you distributed. That's why we're asking people to give from the videos, post the videos, post the articles. If one person comes to guidance from a, a post that you made, you're the recipient of that. You know in dunya they call multi-level marketing, somebody's emailing us. Oh this individual, this, we're familiar with all of these things, we're, we're business students. So multi-level marketing is when you get people to do things and they get a financial incentive for what they're doing. As a result they go out and do these different actions, they get a percentage of everything and then all these people keep spreading this out like a wildfire, it spreads. But in tariqah we're trying to train people to understand who have faith, this is much more profitable. But you have to have faith to believe in me. Means that if you believe in me, you believe in this teaching, start posting. That's immense multi-level marketing from the heavens. You start po posting these knowledges, start posting these videos, start posting these articles. What's happening to you? How Allah begins to spread the bounty of your rizq, the bounty of your health and the bounty of your faith. Say that in one day you posted and hundred people read those articles or the knowledges that you posted. Allah rewards you, that's multi-level marketing. He rewards the shaykh one because the knowledges that went out, that's the shaykh's knowledges. He rewards the one whom disseminated and spread that. So who are the best of the multi-level marketing? The holy companions. The Islam you have now, if everybody just sat down in Medina and lived and died and forget the religion would have stayed and ended in Medina. But the himma and the immense zeal of the holy companions is that immediately they took the message and they dispatched around the earth. You go to Uzbekistan, there's Sahabi there. You go to China because they, one of the Sahabi heard from Prophet that take knowledge even if you have to go to Sin. And there's a holy companion deal, 1400 years ago he lived and died in China. And the Muslim nation is almost 1400 years in China, wow, well that was multi-level spiritual marketing. Immediately they heard the message of Prophet and they dispatched it on the earth. And everywhere they went for their trade, for their business, they opened a masjid. That was the only intention of their trade and Allah made them to be immensely profitable, immensely successful. Muslim merchants and traders were immensely successful, why? because they were doing the trade as a means to build their akhirah. As soon as they landed in a region, they built a masjid there. They propagated Prophet Wasallam's teachings and as a result Islam had spread onto the earth. So everywhere we go on this earth we are only be Muslim because they had spread it. So the first of these to teach is Prophet Wasallam. Then they used it for dunya and making commissions on dunya and everything but everything has to go back to sincerity. When somebody has faith in their teacher and says that, I, 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 I cherish these realities and my love for Prophet I want to be successful in dunya and akhirah. 
then propagate the teachings. Take the links, spread them, take articles, spread them, take videos in, sh in shorter segments and spread 60 seconds, 2 minutes, 1 minute. If the person reads it comes to guidance and understanding, you're being dressed by the blessing. And that will come to you in either ways that you never imagined, never imagined. Now Allah was sent from things that people could never imagine. If you think you did all these things and you got a bonus check from your cleverness, no, no. It was because of your khidmat and your service. You got a check from somebody, it was not because of you, it was because of your khidmat and your service. And that becomes a life of faith, this is our entire life and our way. That if you live a life of service your life will be blessed. This is your dunya but imagine then what awaits the servant in their grave. That it was not, oh you're coming to your grave only because of your salah, God, no God forbid that we're coming to our grave with our salah but we're coming to the grave with our service. How I serve my shaykhs, how I serve the knowledge, how I'm trying my best to serve Sayyidina Muhammad with that I'm going into the grave, not the, that I prayed zor on time only, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is it true when you strike the asa on the ground that shaitan flees? You strike the asa on the ground and shaitan flees? InshaAllah, maybe for you it's true, that's good. But if you do too much you may scare people. <laughs> so just holding the asa is enough for shaitans to not be around you. Now if you want to strike it on the ground and part the sea, that may be a different secret that you have and Allah open for you but <laughs> yeah, try to walk a humble path so that Nobody has to know what you're trying to do. The one whom has a love and an ishq, Ya Rabbi for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad and the holy sunnah and keeping the sunnah alive that I'm having my cane and I'm using my cane and so Allah dress it and bless it. With that ishq and with that love then Allah makes it to be what's necessary for that servant. And one of its realities is the immense dragon. So soon people will be understanding more and more about dragons and the reality of dragons and there are people talking about you have to connect with your dragon. So it's interesting that these topics are coming into dunya and Muslims don't know anything about this subject, that's the, the sad part because most of these talks are from other people. So when everyone's talking about reptilians we were teaching about that, the reptilian is a snake. And the snake is from shaitan, the, sh the snake was cast out of paradise, it's a cast out creature. Its symbol is then from shaitan. So all these creatures that are coming like reptilians and these, these different creatures, they're coming uh, with a shaitanic energy and coming onto this earth. And what's necessary for the believers then is then the dragon force and understanding what the dragon is through the lataifs of their heart and uh, the keepers of paradise, the guardians of paradise. That Allah support the servant with believing support and heavenly and angelic support. Sayyidina Malik salam is the chief of that reality, he's the, the guardian of that reality. So this is in the hands of Islam and the hands of Sayyidina Muhammad and the more you'll see the devil then you'll understand what the heavens because the heaven side they don't show themselves. The devil side is where you see, so everyone's seeing now these people with serpent eyes and serpent faces and serpent skins coming out. We said before they're now modifying their entire body at a distance you begin to see that it actually looks like a, like a lizard scale, like a snake because the color of their ink and everything is making them look more and more like a lizard and that's the shape of, of the creature within them. So these are the, the events that are happening upon the dunya and uh, the, the reality and its protections then are in the hands of awliyaullah and those whom, whom study under awliya inshaAllah and they represent the heavenly kingdom and, and, the, and the heavenly realities that are not talked about. 
nor understood I would imagine in, in most circles of people. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Does the wearing of socks prevent negative energies from attaching to the feet? Wearing of socks, no. The negative energy goes right through your feet and goes right through your shoes. So that's why I said you walk in the mall you, you feel your feet burning. But when your bare feet are out you're again much more sensitive because it's your skin feeling electricity and, and feeling the different charge of energies. So you can put your hoof, the leather socks and it may make the intensity of the energy and the sparking feeling to be lessened. But uh, anytime there is a difficulty of that then keep yourself in wudu and begin to make your salawats and be patient that anybody who's training in the world of light has to become more familiar with energy. So there's good energy, bad energy and indifferent energy, just energies that are passing in an energy field. So to become more familiar with it requires patience and, and tolerance and and uh, practices on how to push away anything of an extremely negative and how to bring extremely positive energies. This is through the salawats and the breathing and the madad and the connection, inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Shaykh, I don't know why but people in my presence always get mad. Please guide me on what to do. Yeah, maybe you, you're wearing a white hat and you should make a colourful hat and wear a colourful hat. Something in your energy is maybe agitating other people of a negative energy or lesser energy. Uh, don't stare into people's eyes, sort of keep your gaze down, keep yourself always with wudu. Don't wear white if you find that to be happening. Wear the white if you're going for jummah, for salah at home. But there are certain things that are reflecting too much energy. And in a negative environment that, that like asking for problems. So then you have to learn how to regulate it and veil the energy. The colourful hats and colourful kufis that we have at the store is for that exact purpose. If you try to go into you know like uh, certain places all in white that energy is going to burn a lot of creatures that are attached to people. So to veil oneself then sort of more peaceful and approaching colours, less sort of uh, energy. So colourful uh, hats then can reduce that, don't look into the eyes of people, keep your gaze down inshaAllah and uh, don't do your zikr very strong in front of uh, those types of situations like you're in an office meeting and making lots of salawats, don't do that. It's going to make an energy that agitates all these other people whom they're not doing those practices inshaAllah. So it could be many things, also email help me at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum respected Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa If one does lots of amount of khidmat but the character, manners and practicing deen is not too good, what's the understanding of such a situation for the qabr and akhirah? I didn't understand that, sorry one more time. If one does a lot amount of khidmat but the character, manners and practicing deen is not too good, what's the understanding of such a situation for our qabr and akhirah, the grave? One who does a lot of khidmat then you, you, anyone who is disciplined to do a lot of service and they keep within the religious laws means they do their salah, they do all of what Allah is asking of them but still their practices may have a weakness. Allah makes their character by the sake of their khidmat to be good. And then there's a hadith from Prophet that there are people whom their character is good, like a beautific character but their actions may be weak and that's okay because only Allah will come and teach that if Allah is happy with your character your khuluq, Allah can make an angel and you won't even know it. And that angel will be representing you and do every worshipness in perfection. 
all the way and will live 135 years of complete worshipness and the reward of that will all be dressed upon that servant. Allah is free to do whatever Allah wants to do. But the teaching was focus on your character because what's the value if you zor you pray it on time, maghrib you pray it on time but you yell and scream and shout and, and throw things at people and well, what Allah needed you to be on time. So people then begin to focus on different things and that's when we talked about Karbala. They prayed Asr on time but they were slaughtering Imam and Husayn Literally in the middle of the field they said it's Asr time they stopped. This is what kind of insanity is that? They found that their Asr had to be more important than the, the horrific and evil events of what they were doing. So there are people whom their logic is way off. And that's what's the danger is that this path is based on the heart. This path is based on, I have to have a good heart, I have to have good actions. Otherwise what God needs on my dogma and all my practices? He doesn't. But they should have been making me beautific. Why Allah needs you? Allah doesn't need your prayers. You need to pray to discipline your wild beast. You need to pay, Allah doesn't get it, the money, the blood, the food, nothing reaches to Allah but we need to do it to show our humility and to take care of our brother. We are our brother's keeper. So all our deeds and our actions were supposed to make our character beautific. So when we fast Ramadan and you feel hungry, do you un understand then how sad it is for somebody to always be in a Ramadan, always to be hungry? It's horrific. So then you quickly try to give those people food. So this is all of what Allah asked of us was supposed to make our character good. But imagine if the character is rotten and they do all the actions, means something happened they didn't get it. And whatever they're doing in their actions are not working because it's not changing their character to be good and that's something wrong then. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.